Hi everybody, this is Jonathan Scott of the Big Cat People at Home here in Nairobi, Kenya. Behind the camera, Angela, we're wildlife photographers, and this is the latest in our top tips on photography. Now be sure to press the subscribe button, and then we can be able to actually tell you each time we upload a new video. So today, what are we going to talk about? Composition is just so important. Now, just to give you an example, it's a little bit like talking to you and trying to get your attention. You see, when I leave a pause like that, I capture your attention. If I slow my voice down for emphasis, or if I smile and get animated, everything looks different. That is the essence of composition. It's visualizing the frame that you're looking at. Not just straight through the camera initially, but the frame of the world that you're trying to interpret. Where's the picture? Now, Cartier-Bresson, the master French photographer, the father of photojournalism, used to walk around with what we'd consider today almost like a little point and shoot. And he used to be in the shadows. He used to just be an observer. And he coined this wonderful expression, which hits the nail on the head when it comes to composition. And he talked about the decisive moment. It could be in a sporting event when somebody scores a goal. But in photography, it's when you are present. And that's the big thing about photography. It's learning to see. And more than anything, and this is what Angie always says to me, pay attention. Where's the picture? Where is the decisive moment? And at times, if you're a wildlife photographer, it could be the moment two lions decide to get up on their back legs and start fighting. Or a mother lioness begins to groom and look, lick her cubs. Or the pride gets up and they go and drink. Or a termite mound, but with a cheetah on it. And so capturing that moment is all about actually visualizing it and being ready for the when the moment presents itself. You could really talk about composition as geometry. It's when all the elements, the lines in the picture come together. And you know, human beings, we're very uniform in some ways in the way that we see things. There are certain things that just naturally appeal to us. For instance, if you're driving out in the savannah in Africa and you have a storm sky in the distance, beautiful, big, puffy clouds, and then you have an ocean of grasslands in front of you, and there's a track just weaving its way into the picture. Your eye has to follow that track right to the horizon. And then you've got the sky, the glory of the clouds. Now, what it says to you at that point, so you've got the foreground, you've got a track running through it, maybe a vehicle going down the track, maybe a lion coming towards you. And then you've got the sky. And at that moment, you have to make a very important decision. Because to create balance and drama and a dynamic in the picture, the last thing you want is for the horizon to be running straight through the middle of the picture. It's so indecisive. It's like you're saying, well, yeah, the sky's okay. And yes, the, fore the foreground's okay. But if the sky is big and dramatic, make it two thirds of your frame. And the foreground, just a third. Maybe you've got giraffe walking along the horizon. Well, if you do, give them space to walk into the picture. Don't stick them smack in the middle. And again, we talk about the rule of thirds. Now imagine a piece of paper broken up like a noughts and crosses game. So you divide your frame into, fr into thirds this way, and then you divide your frame into thirds this way. At the points that those lines intersect, they're very important in terms of eye catching. So here's your frame. Here's this third over here and the bottom third at that juncture there. So we're talking over in this section of the frame. You might have a cheetah looking into the picture. And by offsetting it, it creates drama. You look at the cheetah and the cheetah is looking into its world. Now, I remember one time we were out in the Mara and there was a glorious stormy sky, one of those incredible Mara evenings. And the light was beginning to fade. 
you had this big, dark blanket of sky, grey-blue. And then you had the foreground, the horizon, so you'd already decided two-thirds sky. And then along that bottom third, there was a termite mound. And up onto the termite mound walked Kike, the cheetah, the same cheetah that crapped on me. Big Cat Diary, Big Cat Week 2003. And we saw the opportunity. Suddenly, the picture was evolving. We'd already seen the wonderful sky, but it was missing an extra element. And that element was when that cheetah, Kike, walked up onto the termite mound. And she just stood there, looking into the picture. In fact, she then turned, looked out. So the dynamic was, and Angie and I were both taking pictures here with our 70 to 200. Angie saw the opportunity, offset the termite mound to one side. On that transect between the third line here, where it captures or transects the bottom third, that's the crucial point. That's where the cheetah on the termite mound is in this glorious picture. Two-thirds sky, because that was the story, the drama of the sky. The cheetah silhouetted and the termite mound above the horizon. So you've got this perfect silhouette. But guess what? When we were looking at that picture, actually, from our vehicle, the horizon was cutting through the body of the cheetah. So what are you going to do? We knew we had to get lower to raise up in the picture the termite mound to put the cheetah up as a silhouette on the horizon, not having the horizon cutting halfway through it. How are you going to do that? Well, you couldn't get out of your car. You're in the reserve. There are rules. But we had a little device called a waist level finder, a little periscope, clipped it onto the back of where the viewfinder is, and lowered the camera, 70 to 200 mil Canon lens, lowered the camera and lens over the edge of our open door until, and we're looking down the periscope, we can see our image, even though we're not looking through the viewfinder, now we're looking down. That's why waist level finder. And now we've lowered the camera until the point came that the horizon dropped and we had cheetah on a termite mound sky. Cheetah off to one side, sky two thirds. And then guess what? Angie took about 20 pictures in every picture. And she kept taking because she could feel that there was something missing. The cheetah was standing with its head turned off to one side, dynamic. But its tail was down. So it looked like a tailless cheetah with four legs. And then at one moment, and for one moment only, Cartier Bresson's decisive moment, Kike put her tail up. So the curl of the tail and then the sway of the back and then coming up to the head of the cheetah, perfection. That was the extra moment. That was the dynamic which completed the picture and created the composition. Well, I think I've probably talked quite a lot here. So what I want to say to you now is, if you like what we're doing, be sure to press the button and give us a thumbs up and make sure you check out regularly the YouTube channel. And you know what? You can find that very same picture on our fine art gallery, thebigcatpeople.com. Go and check it out. And you tell me if it isn't just the most glorious picture, which would look wonderful on your wall. And when you do, you can have a chuckle because you're looking at the cheetah that crapped on Jonathan's head. So that's all from the Big Cat people. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed the information. Bye-bye.